Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my picks for the top 10 soccer cleats slash football boots of 2017. Now the criteria for this list is that the shoe has to be a readily available inline model, and that's about it. Now of course I'm in the unique position where I've actually had an opportunity to wear pretty much every current top end boot out there, so I have a pretty good idea of what everything is all about. And of course these are all picks based on my own personal experiences and opinions. Your opinions, your experiences may be different from mine, so feel free to leave your top 10 list or at least your favorite boots of 2017 available right now down below in the comments of this video. Without further ado, let's get right into it. The Nike Magista Obra 2. Now this is a shoe that really impressed me mainly because of the upper. It features a fly knit construction like you'll find from other top end models from Nike at the moment. But what's interesting about the Obra 2 is the fact that the base fly knit for the upper is actually quite thin, which allows for a really good amount of feedback, kind of what you would expect from a thinner style synthetic. But because of the 3D texturing that they've implemented to the upper, you also get this really interesting dampen sensation that you would expect from a much thicker, more bulky more heavily padded shoe but you get the dampen sensation with the feedback that you wouldn't necessarily expect making this shoe feel completely unique in comparison to everything else when it comes to ball feel and just the general touch that it provides also for a mid-cut shoe from nike i really find the over 2 to be quite comfortable out of the box more so than what you find from the phantom 3 or the Superfly 5. The Adidas X16 Plus Pure Chaos. Now this is a shoe with a very unique design, difficult to compare to other boots out there. It has this really interesting internal tech fit construction where basically it's an elasticated sleeve that snugs around your foot really, really nicely. You have a lacing system on top of that. And then on top of that, you have a big lace cover that kind of hides everything and gives the shoe a very sleek, kind of seamless sensation on your foot. Touch on the ball is quite good. The upper is nice and soft. The shoe as a whole is very, very comfortable as well, especially in the heel area, which is super, super important. You get the sprint frame construction, which gives it a nice lightweight feel on feet as well. Plus you get the FG AG stud pattern, which granted it's nothing groundbreaking from a performance standpoint, but as a whole entire package, the shoe is actually very, very good. The Nike Hypervenom Phantom 3, both the DF mid cut model, as well as the low cut variation. I personally prefer the low, but it really is a matter of personal preference. One isn't better than the other. With that said, what I really like about the Phantom 3, again, is the unique fly knit construction that you have to the upper. It's probably the most complex fly knit upper that we've seen from Nike so far, and I would argue possibly the best one as well, in that it does really provide a unique feel with its 3D texturing implementation, the pour on inserts through the striking zone, that really does offer a unique sensation when shooting the ball, uh, more so in comparison to the Superfly as well as the Obra 2. That's what really sets that boot apart for me. Plus, it's sock-like, it's comfortable, the Flywire cable system running through the upper does a really good job of securing your foot, and the fact that it is available in a low-cut variation I'm a huge fan of. It gives you the opportunity to have that fly knit softness, that sock like feel on feet, but if you don't necessarily want the mid cut aspect, you have that option. The Puma Evo Power Vigor 1. Now this is an awesome shoe for so many different reasons. One, out of the box comfort is phenomenal. This is a shoe that pretty much requires no break in time at all. The upper is soft against your foot. It really does have a sock like sensation now that it has incorporated a one piece kind of mesh based enclosure. You have the adapt light synthetic on top of that and then sandwiching between those two layers, you have small 3D AccuFoam dots which really create this interesting dampen sensation while still maintaining a fairly thin pingy feel on the ball as well. The striking experience though is the main reason why I think you would buy these. The shoe is designed around a natural barefoot striking motion where your foot has the natural flexibility while still wearing shoes to curl and move uh, with your strike giving you this interesting kind of recoil effect similar to how you would strike a ball with no shoes at all. It's obviously not going to increase the power of your shot or make your shot more accurate but the feel and experience of wearing an Evo Power model more specifically the Vigor 1 when striking the ball is unlike anything else out there. So just based on that experience alone the Evo Power Vigor 1 is highly recommended. The Nike Tiempo Legend 6. Now out of all the shoes on this top 10 list, this is my personal favorite of the bunch. What's great about the Legend 6 is one, you get good quality soft kangaroo leather, but that's incorporated 
into a one-piece design along with an internal skeleton support frame that allows you to have the softness and traditional feel you'd expect from a leather boot, but also the tightness and lockdown and responsiveness that you'd expect from something a lot more modern. It maintains a low cut in the heel, which is my personal preference, it has a no-nonsense stud pattern, and the shoe itself has a nice solid feel to it overall. Not super light, but definitely not heavy either. So if you're on the market for something that has that soft, traditional leather feel, both in regards to comfort as well as touch, but at the same time you want that modern, uh, I guess, technology incorporated into your boot, the Legend 6 combines both of those two elements better than any other leather shoe out there, in my opinion. The Under Armour Clutch Fit Force 3.0. Now this is definitely the most underrated boot on this list, mainly because it is coming from a brand like Under Armour that's not the most established in the soccer industry or football industry, however you wanna say it. Now, what's great about the Clutch Fit Force 3.0 is that clutch fit upper. It has this really unique ability to kind of stretch around your foot and then bounce back into shape once you've loosened the laces. It gives you this instant one-to-one, -one, almost molded to your foot shape, but without feeling like it's squeezing your foot or just feeling too tight in general. The shoe is super comfortable, the upper is super flexible, and it also has this really unique insole that provides some of the best underfoot cushioning, if not the best underfoot cushioning, from any soccer cleat currently available. So again, super unique package. I would kind of compare it to something like the Evo Power Vigor 1, but it's at the same time, very, very different as well. It also has kind of a rubbery finish with a little bit of added grip to the surface of the upper. So if you were a fan of something like the Predator Instinct, while this is a fair bit off that particular shoe, it is kind of similar in terms of having the gripper, grippy upper idea. So overall, Clutch Fit Force 3.0, Highly recommended, very underrated. The Nike Mercurial Vapor 11. Now this is a fairly easy choice to make. You can always expect a Mercurial on a top 10 list. And really the Vapor 11, if you want something that is thin, lightweight, fits exceptionally tight and really close to your foot, and also offers some of the most aggressive traction that you can get from a firm ground stud pattern, the Mercurial Vapor 11 is, in my opinion, the best of the best when it comes to all of that criteria. It has the Tasian Synthetic Upper that truly does provide the best barefoot feel on the market, no extra padding whatsoever, instant feedback, it almost feels like you're not wearing any shoes at all. The stud pattern is excellent. The new Nike plate sole plate has that anatomic shaping to the base, which gives you this super locked in responsive sensation. And again, as a package, I think it's the best performing Nike Mercurial Vapor Nike has ever put out. It's amazing that we're 11 models in, but even as we are that far in, they're still getting better and better. So again, barefoot, lightweight, aggressive traction, tight fit, Vapor 11 is the way to go. The Nike Mercurial Superfly 5. As great as the Vapor is, the Superfly is equally as good in terms of providing a different variation of a modern Mercurial experience. The Flyknit Upper definitely isn't as thin as what you'll get from the Vapor, but it is arguably softer, more flexible, and more comfortable on your foot depending on what your preferences are. You do get the mid-cut aspect of that particular shoe as well, which a lot of people are big fans of. You maintain the same Nike plate sole plate as well as the stud pattern, and when you have the Flywire cables within the Flyknit Upper as well, you get this super locked-in responsive sensation, but again, from a package that in comparison to the Vapor is a little bit softer, a lot more sock-like in terms of the feel on your foot, and you could argue a little bit more comfortable as well. Again, it comes down to personal preference, but the Superfly 5, very unique package and one shoe that I can very highly recommend. The Made in Japan Mizuno Wave Ignitus 4. Now this is probably the most surprising boot on this list. And if you're not big on Mizuno, especially in North America, you're probably not even familiar with this particular shoe, but it is the last of a dying breed of boot, which is kind of what we had from the Predators as well as the T90s, which I know a lot of people miss, but there is still something like this available. What's great about the Wave Ignitus 4, especially the Made in Japan variant, Variation, is you do get kangaroo leather towards the front of the shoe. You get the big rubberized striking element, the off-centered lacing system, a really unique bladed stud pattern that provides pretty good traction and awesome stability, comfort that is fantastic, as you can expect from pretty much any Mizuno product, and the build quality, being that it is a made in Japan variation, is excellent as well. So if you're a fan of the older Adidas Predators or the older Nike T90s, Take a look at the Made in Japan variation of the Mizuno Wave Ignitus 4. 
I can very highly recommend them. The Adidas Copa 17.1. Now what's great about this boot is Adidas gave us a good quality full kangaroo leather upper and they combined it with the sprint frame taken from the A17 top end models. So those two elements together allow you to have the softness both in regards to comfort as well as touch that you would expect from a kind of more traditional leather boot, but also the lightweight feel and more aggressive traction provided by that sprint frame and modern stud pattern that you wouldn't necessarily expect to get given the upper of the shoe itself. So in comparison to something like a Copa Mundial, I would argue that the Copa Mundial does offer better leather quality and is a better traditional style shoe in comparison to the Copa 17.1, but the 17.1 offers that classic softness, as well as the modern aesthetic and feel that you wouldn't necessarily expect to have all in the same shoe. So for those reasons, it is an excellent option if you're looking for all of that in one boot. All right, so that is it for my top 10 soccer cleats slash football boots of 2017. If you're looking for more info on any of these shoes, there are review videos for pretty much everything up on my channel. So if you wanna do a quick search, more information is available. If you have any picks of your own, again, feel free to leave those down below in the comment section. And if you do have any questions for me regarding my picks or any suggestions for boots that you're potentially interested in, leave those questions down below and I'll do my best to answer all of them in a timely manner. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching.